Hey, what's going on? Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 208 is with Toby Ball from the podcast Strange Arrivals. Good, good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I've been looking forward to talk with you. because, And the reason why is because th- this is my subject. This is this is how I have lived for the past umpteen million years. I mean, Strange Arrivals season number three is now available. Folklore, urban legend, campfire talk, are UFOs real? And the reason why I ask that is because I step into a forest every day and I'm telling you, there's something very alien in this forest that is teaching teaching me on a daily basis. Oh really? What is it what what is it teaching you? I like what do you just just wisdom ways to look at life differently. I almost feel like I'm a silent wolf underneath the brush and it's my job to watch and to learn and to take a lot of notes. Oh interesting. Yeah, you know, I do I believe in, in UFOs? There's a lot of people who have uh, experiences that they can't understand, like right. whether whether that means that there are aliens visiting the Earth, like I, I, I don't know. I I, I don't necessarily <laughs> think so. But even the people who are who are looking into UFOs, like a lot of them don't think it's aliens, right? Right? They think it's it's something that's more sort of earthbound and complicated, and that all these different sort of paranormal things that we see all kind of come from one source. So like poltergeist and UFOs and, you know, werewolves or whatever are all kind of coming from this one thing uh, that that is sort of earthbound. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you on that, because, I mean, it's, it's almost like there's there's a source of energy out there and it's going to take its own shape so that you can understand it in your own language, whereas somebody else might see it as something else. Yeah. And I think. um and I think even like going back over the over the centuries, right, is is uh, some people say, you know, like stories of fairies back in the, you know, the Middle Ages and, you know, again, werewolves and just the different ways we've kind of interpreted these things has changed over the years. Like as our technology gets better, as our society changes, we kind of understand it based on where we are uh, at that time. So you know, as soon as we develop airplanes and, and things that are up in the sky a lot, suddenly it's UFOs, it's strange craft in the sky. Um, it's sort of nuts and bolts, like made out of metal uh, type things that land in fields. Um, yeah, so this definitely, that's that's a way a lot of people who've been studying it a lot kind of think about it as being, a lot of it's our interpretation of it, and it's not just the way the thing actually is. Mm-hmm. You you guys really dig deep in Strange Arrivals in the way that your guests, th- this is authentic, and this is what listeners need to tap into, because, I mean, I mean, you're talking with U.S. military intelligence, and you've got Chris Carter from X-Files. This is no joke. This is the real deal on this podcast. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, that that's the, that's the idea, is to try and get in touch with people who, um, you know, have have sort of authentic knowledge or have interesting ways of looking at 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 the issue um, that that people might not have heard of before or might uh, uh, just might be a new perspective. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that kind of runs the gamut. You know, Chris Carter, I think a lot of what people sort of understand about UFOs comes from watching the Mm X-Files, right? So it's interesting to talk to him about where did he get those ideas? How much did, you know, actual UFO stories influence the the plots that he wrote? What did he think was interesting or important about it? Um, Yeah, so I try to come at the the UFO issue from different angles. When you put an episode together, do you think of those days when the only place that we ever got talk like this was on late night radio? Because what you're doing is you're bringing light to a subject that's always been hidden away in dark places. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I think that I think that's right. And I think the other thing uh, that's hard is that there's just there's so much stuff out there that. you know, it's just kind of speculation, just people talking. Yeah. And it's like, how can you get to what we actually kind of know uh, or what what seems sort of authentic? Um, I think you're 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 talking about Art Bell. Yep. Who um, who back. I don't even know when it started, but definitely in the 80s and 90s, you know, he for four or five hours every night, like across the country uh, would have guests on and they would talk about 
you know, a lot of it was UFOs, but, you know, conspiracies, other kind of weird paranormal stuff. Um, right. And that's how that information kind of got out there. And, you know, if you're filling up four or five hours a night, day after day after day, you know, some of the stuff is really good and some of it's like sort of OK. Um, and, and, and so doing the podcast, it was really trying to drill down to, you know, what are sort of the most interesting sort of compelling stories um what what do what do people who are skeptics what do they think actually yeah, happened yeah. what can we learn from these stories what's kind of interesting about them beyond like is it really aliens or is it not aliens <laughs> um so that's been kind of that's been sort of my take through you know now three seasons well you're not afraid to use the soundbite you're not afraid to put all sides of people's points of view in there and that really draws me in as a listener because it's like you're talking with real people as well yeah, you know, as much as possible, um, I've tried to get the actual witnesses, yeah. um, you know, for, for more recent uh, events, uh, if I can get, if I can interview them. Um, and then for a lot of things, like I did uh, a bunch of episodes on Betty and Barney Hill, who were a couple from New Hampshire who um, believe they were abducted in 1961 and they were on a lot of radio. Mm -hmm. I mean, they became mm -hmm. sort of minor celebrities. So there was a lot of, a lot of radio stuff that I could take and, and get their own uh, voices telling their story and representing in the way that was sort of most authentic for them. But then also getting, you know, scientists um, and researchers who can say like, well, you know, this is a problem because a lot of what they remembered was under hypnosis. And yeah. when you're under hypnosis, you're not sort of, you know, it's not like a movie's replaying in your head. Yeah. Like it's a much more complicated thing that has to do with imagination and your feelings about things and so on. So it's trying to give like a full picture of the of the possibilities. Would it be a waste of money and time if you were to, you know, to kind of go into a, a rebirth of the, the, the Rendlesham forest. In other words, to go like all these years later, let's go back in there and find out what's going on. Is there any type of evidence of their of physical situation? Yeah, I don't, I, my, my guess is, is that, uh, so this happened in, in 1981. Yep, yep. Um, and, and that it was, you know, the the air force went in and this actually on the on the podcast you can hear like tape that was that was taken at the time they were doing this and they went in with like geiger counters and uh you know star scopes which are like night vision scopes um to try and investigate it i don't know if you would be able to find anything okay. at this late date um i know that there was uh, a guy named david clark in england who went back i think in the maybe in the 2000s, I can't remember the exact date, but he went and the government basically said, here's everything we have on this case and gave him this big binder. And he was very excited. And then it turned out a lot of the binder was just these sort of letters to the editor about the Rendlesham Forest thing with just people with their opinions and stuff. And that there wasn't a whole lot of actual evidence that they had. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like from talking to both witnesses and then researchers that this is one of the ones that we, we we're probably not going to know much more yeah. than we know now. And it's just a matter of like, you know, who writes the best book, I guess, as to uh, as to what the public ends up thinking about it. And yet it inspires me because I'm that guy that enters the forest. I, I don't need a Geiger counter. Just let me go sit in this forest yeah. and let me just listen and find out if something's been planted inside the rings of these trees. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think there's a lot like some of these sites are like, you know, almost pilgrimage sites, you know, and I and I think, you know, Roswell, New Mexico, yeah. you know, there's a big festival. People go there all the time. Um, and, and there's there's other sites like that. Rendlesham Forest is one uh, Point Pleasant, uh, West Virginia, where the Mothman was um, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's. So that's something I do in this in this uh, in this season, and you know where he was actually seen is this really weird, like huge area where they used to store munitions uh, during World War II, and they have these things called igloos, which are like these little mounds, and you'd go in there, and there were just like these storage things, and now they're empty, but they're like these concrete bunkers, and 
and, and people just say it's really, really spooky. Uh, but, you know, people go there and they walk around and, mm-hmm. um, you know, sort of commune with the area where the, where the Mothman and like some UFOs and stuff, uh, all this paranormal stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Is there a side of your creative uh, personality as well as the, the journalist touch that you've got that if, if, if we did make connection with an outside alien, would, would we see a major change in, in groups taking shape such as Scientology? You know, you, in other words, it's all of a sudden, oh, I've got a different belief now. Let's form this group. Let's form this group. Let's form this group. Because it seems like people, they're, they're seeking, but, but, it, but, it, but it's, it's for something that we can't see yet. But if it appears, what's your gut? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I like there's already these groups have already formed. Yeah, based on not a whole lot, right? Uh, like you think about Heaven's Gate, uh, the group where uh, you know I think it was 39 people committed suicide. They did yeah, you know, um, and that was all based around uh, sort of, uh, it was a UFO cult, right? They thought a UFO was going to come and, and, and take them away. And, and that was, that was eventually why they took their own lives. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, there's a bunch of different sort of new religious movements from my viewpoint, like really compelling that they're real. Uh, so if there was like some solid evidence, yeah, I mean, I think a hundred percent, that would change a lot of things and the way a lot of people kind of saw themselves in, you know, the world and the universe and, and, and what they kind of believed. You're going to think I'm a freak here, and this is not a conspiracy theory, but this is just something that I feel in my gut. I believe that COVID was an attack by an alien. I, I really do. I, I think that they, they were testing. And it wasn't human against human. I think it was something out there that dropped something down here. That's interesting, too. Um, have you read The Andromeda Strain? No. By uh, Michael Crichton? No. So, so this is... Uh, it's a you know it's a science fiction book but uh it's basically the idea is if we're going to run into um an alien life form the most likely thing it's going to be is like uh, a bacteria or a yeah. germ or a virus or something like that and it's basically about how I, I think it's a meteor comes to earth with this bacteria or virus mm-hmm. or whatever i can't remember mm-hmm. it's a long time and and how we just don't have any way of dealing with it, mm-hmm. right? And it just, you know, and it's COVID-like, right? It, it just spreads across the earth and, and people don't know how to how to manage it. See, that's like with Perseverance up on Mars. What is that little monkey up there going to pick up that's going to come back here and, and it's going to be like, oh, my God, we should have just left it up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I it's It, it is one of those weird – I was reading a, uh, uh, a piece in a newspaper – uh, with somebody who's like, why are we beaming out these these signals to space to say, here we are? Like, do we really want them to come? Like, yeah. who knows what they want? <laughs> you know, be careful what you're asking for. <laughs> How do you write and put the show together in, in the way that you do? Because it is, so, it is so presented well. I mean, I know you have to sit down with your, you know, the directors and the producers and things like that, but, but it's, it's so well put together. Oh, well, well, thanks. What I... You know, what I do is I, you know, I do all these interviews. We find out if there's any kind of audio out there from from uh, radio shows or, or what have you. And, you know, I kind of just lay out what I have, what what's really interesting, kind of lay it all out. And then I, you know, I, I kind of write between all these things to so they kind of make sense when you put them all together. And I kind of come up with like what I kind of think about it. And I I, I kind of put that in. But it really, if you take a look at like early drafts, it's really just little blocks of of like people talking in interviews or 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 clips from radio shows or or what have you. And then I just spend a lot of time writing my sort of voiceover stuff. Yeah, because it's definitely conversation and it's a conversation starter. And both of those have got to work hand in hand because it's fun to get into a conversation with outside people uh, uh, about things, strange arrivals. And, and then, you know, it's like people sitting around talking about professional wrestling or the NFL. When, you know, when people are locked in, there's a great conversation out here. Yeah. And I think this is one of those things where people, you know, they feel pretty strongly you know, people who've seen stuff that they can't understand and like they're they're passionate about it. They want you to, you know, if not necessarily believe them, at least sort of understand the impact it had on them. So, you know, some of the interviews I've had, I, you know, 
I, you know, I walk away feeling really energized, yeah. uh, uh, because it's just, they're, they're so, you know, intense and, and really want to get their story across and want people to understand what they've been through. Wow. Toby, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. I mean, I didn't even get to the one main question. In fact, I bet I've got just about a minute to be with you one more time. I got to ask you this question. You bring up a very important part here. And that question is, if we came in contact, would we trust our instinct? I love how you put that out there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, when you see something that you can't explain, like, uh, you know, how do you how do you take it in? How do you comprehend it? How do you figure out how how you understand it? And um, and it's a tough one. And I think it's one of the things that's hard with uh, when you're talking to people about witnessing UFOs. Yeah. It's, you know, what is it that you actually saw and what is it you trying to make sense of it? Um it's you know for a lot of people this is this is like a sort of life changing event um so yeah like i said I, I i find some of those conversations to be you know very affecting right season three of strange arrivals on iheart radio but you got to take it in from season one too because it's, it's just unbelievable what you're doing here please come back to this show anytime in the future toby yeah i'd love to excellent will you be brilliant today okay sir okay thank you very much